Hey, what's up guys? Jace Two Cents here, and I forgot to charge the batteries for my lav mic, and so now I've got to, I've got to deal with the dead cat in my face, as a lot of people like to call it old dude's hairy balls. But anyway, if you guys haven't heard, Sapphire launched their new TriX X app, Trix, TriX X, I don't know, T-R-I-X-X, however you want to pronounce that which now allows for overclocking of the Fury X and unlocks two things that people have said needed to be done in order to see the full potential of Fury, and that being voltage control and memory speeds. So obviously that's what we're gonna do today. And you guys can see that's why that's why I don't sell or give away all this stuff because I, I can't go back and revisit you know subject matter like this. If I had given this away or sold it like people said I should do, then I wouldn't be able to do this video, now would I? The Lickmax 2 120 and 240 from Enermax is another awesome choice of AIO liquid coolers for gamers and enthusiasts without breaking the bank. Patented shunt channel technology provides extra layer of cooling capability. Click the link below to find out more. Everybody said the Fury X's true potential won't come out until voltage is unlocked and memory speed is unlocked. Although I, I always doubted the memory speed thing immediately because it's already running such fast memory you know, HBM, obviously, high bandwidth memory at such a freakishly large bandwidth that uh, I didn't see that there could be much improvement there. But anyway, today we are going to accomplish unlocking the voltage and the memory by simply installing the new Sapphire TriXX Trix. Now, let's just call it Trix, the Sapphire Trix uh, software. I don't know, Sapphire TriX, whatever. So I guess Sapphire is the first company to come out with any sort of unlocking utility. Uh, it, this is this is very similar to like MSI Afterburner or any other GUI-based uh, you know graphics user interface overclocking utility. The difference is this immediately unlocks your Fury card by doing nothing more than installing it. It recognizes that it's a Fury, and it and it gives you the functionality right here. Now from left to right, this thing is very automotive looking. Uh, and by the way, I'll put a link to the description, or in the description of this video, I will put a link to this app so that you can just simply go there and download it without having to try and find it. Although Google is your friend, and you can usually find anything or anybody using Google. Uh, I won't, I won't say how I know how you can find people using Google. I've already said too much. I would definitely recommend using the Sapphire utility here over MSI Afterburner or anything like that because. Uh, this is really streamlined, it's really easy to use, and MSI Afterburner has a lot of buttons and functions and things that tend to overwhelm people initially when they're first getting started and overclocking. So I would recommend using this. Um, let's see, so in the settings tab here, you've got some things that you can click on. You guys can check that out yourself. Clicking on card info here will tell you all about your card. So obviously it says that I am running an AMD Radeon R9 Fury. It's cut off and you can't expand it, so the they do need some work on this anyway. Fiji GPU tells you everything about it. I mean, if you ever wondered about your card, it will tell you everything, including the BIOS version that you're currently running. Uh, hardware monitor, this is going to show you various things going on here with your graphics card. You know, max um, or minimum core clock, max core clock, GPU memory clock, minimax temperature, which is very important, and your fan speed. So it's going to tell you all about that. Um, log now, it's got internal logging so that you can start logging things when, you, when you're overclocking and see what's going on. Uh, then you've got a reset and an apply button for any of the settings that you set up here. Now it's very automotive looking. I think it looks neat. It's kind of like a dashboard on a hot rod or something. But on the left here, you've got your GPU core clock. In the middle, you've got your GPU voltage. And on the right, you've got your memory clock. And then right in the middle on the bottom, you've got your power limit, which is obviously, you know, pretty important. So what we're going to do here is we're going to run three tests using the Metro, uh, Metro Redux benchmark. And I like to use this benchmark for several reasons. One, it's very demanding. Uh, two, it is the actual graphics engine running the game so even though this is a benchmark it's not a synthetic like heaven or valley or fire strike where those have some optimization stuff going on specifically for their own benchmark this is very indicative of how the game would run so it's very similar to doing a controlled real life test that's why i like to use metro um, the other thing i want to point out too is that the card that i'm using here is the vision tech uh, fury x but one thing to keep in mind is all of the Fury X cards are built in-house by AMD. So although the name on the card or the sticker on the fan may vary between Fury Xs, they're pretty much all going to be the same. So, But as with anything when it comes to overclocking, your mileage will vary 
It's not may vary. Your mileage will vary as every single card is going to have a different amount of headroom when it comes to overclocking. So the three tests we're going to run here are base, which is the card as it shipped with those settings. Then the initial overclocking that I was uh, settings I was able to achieve during my initial testing of the card. Uh, so that we can see how much improvement we gain, which we already know I did that video But we're gonna do it again here in case you didn't see that and then we're gonna go for broke We're gonna see how far we can really push this thing with voltage unlocked and memory unlocked and see if it even made a difference So anyway, let's go ahead and kind of fast forward through those first two tests and then we'll get to the overclocking Transition. Well, those first two tests are done, so now it's time to start getting to some of the overclocking. Now, if you guys want a full tutorial on how to overclock, it doesn't really matter which utility you're using. The methodology is going to pretty much remain the same. So go ahead and click uh, the card that's going to pop out right here. It's going to take you to my How to Overclock a Graphics Card video, and you guys can watch that in a little more depth. Even though it's not this exact utility, like I said, the methodology of how to adjust things and how to test pretty much remains the same. Now the very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and crank the power limit all the way up and then on the Fury here they're allowing us a 50% additional power limit for 150% total. That's that's kind of a big deal. Now I know for a fact 1128 already works because I've tested that over and over. You guys even saw the results for that. Now what I would typically do is I would try and set a number I want to kind of shoot for. For in this case let's say I want to try for 1200. Uh, I would probably start by cranking up the voltage as well. Now, some people would say you shouldn't crank the voltage, you should find your max stable at stock voltage. I already did that, that's what the 1128 was. Now, I already know that 1200 megahertz is not going to work. I already know this card is not capable of 1200 megahertz, which is kind of disappointing, quite honestly, considering, uh, you know, the voltage, a lot of people were really hoping the voltage was going to allow, you know, big overclocks, and I, I AMD, unfortunately, their cores have never been known for big overclocks, but they have been known to show decent improvements for marginal incre increases in megahertz speed. Now, one of the things I do like about the Sapphire utility here is that it will, it can actually tell when the system crashed. And so when you boot it back up after a fresh reboot, like I just did, uh, then it's going to ask you if you want to load the previous settings because it detected that it crashed. You could say yes, you could say no. In this case, I'm just gonna say no. It brings us right back to the default. All right, so it's gonna try 1180. There it is right there. Uh, save it. And let's see if it loads up. We've got 1180 on here. Let's go ahead and see if we can make it through uh, our Metro Last Light benchmark at this frequency. I don't want to push it higher because I know at 1190 I had tons of instability issues and 1185 I was getting some incremental incremental freezes. So I'm, I backed it off to 1180 uh, and we're going to go from there. Also too, if you want to know what settings I'm using for Metro so you can kind of compare your own graphics cards to the Fury, uh, then just look in the description where I, I basically listed out all the settings that are right here so you guys can kind of mimic these if you want. But let's see if it makes it through the test or if it crashes or if it decides to update Steam just kind of randomly. GG, Gaben. All right, we passed, yay. All right, so as you can see here, we, uh, let's go ahead and bring up the other images real quick and I'll, I'll put these up on the screen so that you guys can actually see them. Uh, the first test here was stock speeds. We had an average frame rate of 75.96 and a max frame rate of 253. Uh, when we overclocked that to the 1128, that jumped up to 79.39. However, the max frame rate reduced to 249. So that's kind of interesting, right? But then again, there, there's a lot of fluctuations that could cause that. Minimum frame rate, 14.99 on the overclock, and, or on the standard, and then the overclocked minimum was 11.01. .01. So as you can see, we had some drops on the minimum. Kind of take that with a grain of salt though with Metro, where the first few frames that render on Metro are very stuttery. That's why the minimum is always really bad with Metro. Uh, but anyway, there's that. So when it came to our overclock to 1180, we jumped up to 81.53 average. Our max frame rate still stuck right around 249 and the minimum dropped even further to 10.8. But again, like I said, frame of take that with a grain of salt. My three-way config system on Skunkworks actually shows a minimum frame rate of four. So yeah, even with, with the SLI, this drops even farther. So it's really weird the way that benchmark works, but it's these averages that we're really concerned with. And as you can see here by looking at the charts, there are some dips in there, but that, again, that's part of the benchmark. But as you can see, we gained, we gained a total of six average FPS. Uh, but anyway, we gained an average of about six FPS by simply overclocking this thing a little further. 
Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the additional voltage or uh, power limit or memory overclock really gave you any sort of higher headroom that a lot of people were really hoping that the Fury X card was going to see, which also means, unfortunately, the Fury X, even with unlocked voltage, doesn't come anywhere near an overclocked 980 Ti, even though they're at the same price point. The NVIDIA cards just really like overclocking, and they get a lot more percentage of, over of overclock. Let's... How much of a percentage did we actually get? Uh, I don't know, where's my calculator here? Now, ultimately, we only got an 11% overclock uh, by getting you know, unlocked voltage. And realistically, it was even less than that. The additional overclock that we actually got, at least in my card, was 1128 divided by 1180. We only got, uh, let's see, let's minus that by one. We only got an additional 4.4% overclock by having unlocked GPU voltage. So as you can see, there's more at play here than just voltage. And in fact, some graphics cards, depending on their ASIC quality, more voltage doesn't help at all. So anyway, those are the numbers. And unfortunately, it doesn't come anywhere close to an overclocked 980 Ti, which I, to be honest, was hoping that this would have pushed up there. I was hoping for at least like 1250 on the core. Maybe yours will. Maybe mine's just a, a bad sample when it comes to that silicon lottery. So there you go guys, unfortunately I wasn't able to achieve any real impressive numbers with the Fury X and we only achieved about an additional 60 megahertz, actually what, 52 megahertz uh, with the unlocked voltage. Now temperatures also too I want to point out, we never exceeded 54 degrees Celsius on this card and it is a warm room. This room did get up to almost 80 degrees Fahrenheit, in fact today it's going to be about 85 degrees Fahrenheit outside, yeah I know fall right, when will fall freaking come to California, but anyway. Uh, the cooler on there still does a fantastic job of keeping all of that crap nice and cool. Uh, you know, it, it, HBM can get pretty damn toasty considering it's so much heat in a very small space. Uh, but that single 120 uh, thick rad is doing an amazing job at keeping it cool. So this is pretty much the top of the tier lineup right now when it comes to AMD, the Fury X with their HBM. You know, older cards like the 295X2 will probably raw performance beat this card. Uh, however, this is currently their top tier car. This, the 295 X2 isn't being produced anymore, so finding one is going to be difficult. But if you guys are Team Radeon or Team Red, um, then this pretty much is the best that you can get right now at the time of this video. Was hoping for better overclocking. Unfortunately, you didn't get it. But if you have a Fury X, I would love if you would do me a favor. Download this utility, play around with your card, and let me know how far yours went. I'm curious as to if maybe mine's just a silicon lottery dud, or if this is kind of normal across the board uh, when it comes to how far these things are willing to push. So that's where I need you guys to chime in down in the comments and tell me if you have this card, don't pretend like you do, if you have this card and you download this utility, how far did yours go? Anyway, time to get out of here guys, thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.